Okay then, you crazy cats, you've waited long enough. We're now going to start creating a sequence. And as you can see here, drop media to create a sequence. So this is where your sequences are going to be. And this is the media. Well, that's quite simple then. You just grab a video and drag it in and create a sequence, don't you? Not quite. And there are a couple of reasons why. I've just dragged that in there. Let's just go to sequence and check sequence settings. So the sequence settings here say it's 1920 by 1080. That's the output that we want to do. Um, in all honesty, all of my videos on YouTube bar, just a couple are all still 1920 by 1080 HD. There are some creators that are uploading in 4K. It's great that we can shoot in 4K. I still don't think we're there yet to deliver in 4K. However, if you dropped a 4K piece of footage in here and dropped it into here, it would have set the sequence to 4K. There's a reason why I don't do that. And there's a couple of things in here that I want to set from the get-go, which is why we don't just drag and drop. Also, labels or names the sequence the name of the actual file that we first drag in. And you can also see something else that's changed here. I'm just going to tilde, remember that? So we can see everything in here. I don't think this size, oh, this does size up a little bit so we can see. So on here you can see one icon which is different from the others. Now we'll take a quick look at these. This has two icons within the icon. There's a little film strip icon there and there's a sound wave icon there. That means that it's a video file with audio. Nice and simple. What this means is it means it's a sequence. So as you can see, there's actually two names there, Pizza Oven 1 and Pizza Oven 1. But if we drag this out a little bit, it's Pizza Oven 1 MP4. So that's confirming this icon, that it's a video. This has nothing after it, which means it's a sequence, because that's what we built the sequence from. I'm just going to tilde it again to close this, or minimize it at least, bring down that size as well. And what we're going to do is we're going to undo Control and Z. And that was dragging that on. I'm going to control and Z again to get rid of the sequence that it created because there is another way to do this and a better way, again, setting yourself up for success. And that is we're going to come all the way out so we're in the root of the project, not within a folder or a bin. And what we're going to do is we're going to create another bin. There are a couple of ways to do this. You can, wherever you are in the project folder, you can go to File, new and bin or you can see the shortcut control and b i've never used that uh, or you can just right click in an empty space here and click new bin that's the way i do it so that's the way i'm going to do it and what it does is it opens up a new bin it creates a new bin and it already has the title there to edit we're going to name this bin sequences We do that because depending on what bin you're in, when you create a sequence, it will place the sequence inside that bin. Let's just try that. I'm going to just go control and N. It's going to get a little head and create a sequence. And it places the sequence in here. Now, you can't see where it is. And I promise you, sequences are the things you really need to be able to keep a track of. If you can't find your sequence, you've created it somewhere accidentally, you will do this and you can't find it. The easiest way to find is to come all the way to the root of your project folder and click in the search bar and just simply type S E Q and all the way through regardless of how many bins you have here, remember bins are folders, regardless of how many bins you have here, it will show all of the sequences. The reason why we're also not just dragging into here is because I want to be able to label the sequence what it is. So let's control and Z. Let's clear off that search first. Control and Z a number of times and let's create that bin again. So right click, new bin, and we're going to title this sequences and hit enter. Uh, I hit the, uh, I tap the enter all the way over to the right of my keyboard where the number key is. If you're entering, if you've put your, 
title in here you've reworded and you hit return which is the one just above the right hand shift it will go to the next item whether it be a, a bin or a file any kind of media to retitle that as well that's quite frustrating for me and i don't know why that's still a case in premiere pro if you do that just click anywhere either here or anywhere in premiere pro even if you've just titled it if you click out it will then just accent that and action it so it's done not accent action it so we now have two bins we have a bin with our footage in and we have an empty bin of sequences you see how when we double click it doesn't open and open and open but you can twirl down these as well so you can keep everything in view if you prefer so with sequences created the bin we're going to double click into there you see how that happens again what we need to do is double click it when it's not been selected and now we're in here we're going to create a new sequence there are a number of ways to do this it's not a right click like you did with a new bin you can either go to file new and sequence or what I always do once I'm in the area this area where I'm want to create the sequence I type control and N that brings up this which is the new sequence taskbar and this is where we create our sequence for our timeline now as you can see under here I already have a number of custom sequences built how did I do that well it's quite simple you only have to do this once for each type of sequence you want to create as you can see I already have 1080 25 FPS all the details are here for what that means I have 4k YouTube YT uh, that uh, is a 4k size so it's 3840 by 2160 25 frames a second still uh, and it's a pro uh, progressive scan 48,000 Hertz for the audio that's all absolutely fine we don't really need to bother with that 54 is not quite square but it's a nice dimension for video on uh, Instagram when you want it slightly taller than square however we do have square as well we also have ultra HD which actually isn't ultra HD I made this wrong uh, and I always meant to delete that so I'm actually gonna I, oh yeah yeah so I highlight it and I'm gonna delete that preset and then it refreshes this will refresh again once we make our preset and I also have vertical which is instead of 1920 by 1080 it's 1080 by 1920 so for vertical video uh, stories in Facebook or Instagram so how do we make this it's really quite simple what you need to do is go to any of these we're gonna we're, we're gonna make it easy and we're gonna go to digital SLR doesn't really matter we're gonna twirl down 1080 and we're gonna select the 25 frames now this needs to be thought of if you're in an NTSC area this is for PAL so 25 frames a second is for PAL 24 frames a second we haven't mentioned that so far 24 frames second uh, 24 frames per second is considered more of a cinematic frame rate um, I don't use it personally and then we have 30 frames a second which is, is effectively remember this 29.97 frames per second it says it's 30 but it's not it's 29.97 or 30 drop frame this is the only real thing that you'll change depending on where you are but again it doesn't really matter that much anymore because of the world of the internet and everyone watching the same thing in different parts of the world again this only really matters with the footage and where it was captured whether it was captured at 50 Hertz or 60 Hertz which will be clear in 25 frames a second or 29.97 or 30 frames a second or multiplications of that so whether it's 25 you go to 50 50 you go to 100 with 30 you go 30 to 60 and 60 to 120 frames a second do you remember us covering that I'm sure you do uh, if you don't uh, chapter 5 5.1 uh, 5 was understanding frame rates and chapter 4.2 was PAL versus NTSC if this has gone over your head a little bit the first time maybe take a little trip back and just refresh your knowledge with regards to that so 
we're going to make a preset of 25 frames per second, 1080. Now we've highlighted this. We're then going to go to settings. Now we want 1920 by 1080. That's absolutely fine. All of this is absolutely fine. What we want to do is we want to have maximum render quality. Now, this all depends on your machine, whether it's uh, whether it's got four gigabytes or eight gigabytes of RAM or 16 gigabytes. I have 64 gigabytes in my machine. Uh, that's not showing off. I'm a content creator and I run a media production business, so I need as much RAM as I can get. I'm actually considering upgrading to 128. But anyway, that's that's by the by. So the warning says setting the optimized rendering performance to memory is highly recommended when max quality or max bit depth rendering is on. These settings are designed for high performance systems, which I have. Please check Adobe Premiere Pro Support Center for recommended system requirements. It's a really good document is the uh, Pro Support Center uh, for sending you to sleep. However, it does have some good information. So if you're not quite sure with regards to your machine and I cover, I could cover in here so many different eventualities. It's best you just doing the homework yourself and finding exactly what the best setting is for you, for your machine. I'm going to click OK and leave that. Um, however, my machine, I, I'm terrible. I love to see everything as perfect as possible. So you'll see in my workflow, I actually slow myself down because I want to be able to watch back properly. Uh, we'll we'll deal with that. Uh, I, will, I will cover that when we get to there. Everything else is absolutely fine. We don't want to do this every single time. Uh, just to check uh, tracks. Uh, this is a default. So your sequence will automatically open with three video tracks and three audio tracks. That's fine. You can always add or, or delete. You can add additional uh, tracks or remove. It doesn't really matter. That's easily done within the sequence. VR video. We are not working with VR video. It blows my mind. So all of this is done. We're going to save the presets. So we don't have to do this again. And we're going to name this preset. As you saw, I, I have saved mine as uh, 1080 uh, something, 16.9. Not too sure. Uh, but uh, I'm not going to say that. But you would put the name in that you want to save it. And then you'd press OK. When you press OK, what would happen is this would refresh and you would have custom down here. I'm not quite sure if the custom is already there at the beginning, but it, it, it sure will be there once you create a preset because it will be a custom preset. Also, once you open a sequence with one of these once, this will always be the default that it opens at. Don't run into the mistake that I've made a number of times. And I normally create in 1080, 25 FPS, but there's the odd time where I create a square sequence. And then when I've come back into here, even if I've saved everything, closed out, started a brand new project and started a sequence, I haven't even looked here. I've just renamed and hit OK and realized, ah, it's still on square. So this will remember the last sequence you made whenever that was, and it will already have it highlighted and selected. So make sure you select the one that you want, which is 1080, 25 FPS. That's what I want to call this. And then we're going to name the sequence because if we don't and we just press OK under in our sequences bin, we'll just have sequence 0, 02, not 0, 01, because remember, we already made a sequence before, which we didn't use. I used it to to illustrate. Uh, but we're going to highlight this and we're going to call this pizza oven. Now, actually, I'm going to call this pizza oven sequence for two reasons. One, we already have pizza oven one, two, three, four, and so on for the footage. Also, I want to highlight when we get to the end of all this, what you do to render out and the name of the save file. Bear that in mind. It'll be a while until we get to there, but this will come into effect, especially when we get to that point. Okay. In fact, I'm going to say pizza oven sequence and I'm going to say uh, 1080. So that's going to tell me that it's in 1080. I could say it's 169. Uh, for those who don't quite yet understand uh, aspect ratio, 169, the old style TVs were 4-3. So it was four across and three down. It's just a ratio. The 
1080 by 19, 1920 by 1080, sorry, is 16.9. So that's 16 along to nine down. It's the, it's the smallest fraction you can get. And it's what widescreen TV is now. You also have more and more different aspect ratios. One aspect ratio that you will know is one by one, which is square. Obviously it's one along by one down. That's square, that's the images and videos, particularly on Instagram, but then we have four or five. So it should be four across by five down. So it's almost square, but a little bit taller. Anyway, we're gonna save this sequence as pizza oven sequence 1080 and press okay. Now, because we did control and N in this bin, it's created the sequence in this bin. And as we can see, pizza oven sequence 1080. And here is our sequence ready to work in. What are we gonna do next? Well, yeah, it is that time. We're going to bring some footage into here, but via here. <laughs> 